across America with Mega Jackpots. It's Mega Millions. And good evening, everybody. I'm Glenn Burns. It's Tuesday, November the 15th, and tonight's Mega Millions Jackpot, an estimated annuitized $315 million. Oh, my gosh. Like, we won. I get a call from work telling me I need to come into work. There's something big happening, and I said, well, what is it? And they were kind of being very discreet about it and said, well, it involves this, a few of us, and we really need you to come in. I would like to introduce to you our, uh, our newest winners of the largest prize ever in California, $315 million. I walked in, and I mean, they had paperwork saying, you know, we were, they were faxing us stuff on what, what we could have won and what we needed to do and we were hugging and crying and you felt like throwing up and, and running around in circles at the same time. How do you explain winning $315 million? <laughs> we experienced everything from being sick to our stomachs to um, not, sl I, didn't, I don't think I slept for two months through the night. It took me like two and a half months to I physically sleep through the night after this. And so, I mean, you go through every emotion. It's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> there has been some controversy about who actually purchased these tickets as far as who was in this company pool and who was out of the pool. We know there's one individual back at Kaiser who isn't happy about all this. That person is hoping that these folks will share in some of these winnings. We're hoping to find out some of that. Um, three coworkers of ours came forward saying that they were normally part of our lottery pool and that we had agreed, some of us had agreed to put money in for them and since we didn't that they were suing us because we owed them this money. I mean clearly they had no evidence. They were asked monthly, weekly to bring it to our lawyer's office through the depositions, through multiple court hearings and once a month we were, being, we were going to court if not more. They had no basis for the claim. They found a lawyer that saw commission off of $40 million and took it. And the judge let this go on for a year and a half. I thought it was the biggest waste of time, effort, emotions, life. It just flat out really just made us really kind of just frustrated and angry. Our say finally came in us trying to end it by countersuing and therefore ending the lawsuit. We were still technically married when I won, so therefore it had to be split. It wasn't, it wasn't, you couldn't really get around it. Well, I could, but I could have to go to jail for it, I mean. By then we had split up twice and we weren't on speaking terms anymore. So I just told him when I left that morning, I need to go into work to, to clear some things up. Um, if you're not gone by the time I get back, then I will leave. And when I got home that night, he was still there, so I just packed up that outfit and left. I believe his mom heard it on the news and saw that there was a clip of my Garden Grove clinic on it. And I flat out told him, I don't need to talk to you anymore. My lawyers will talk to you. And she said in a threatening manner that if I hid anything, the lawyers would find out. We won $315 million. Then the state takes the tax, the one that goes to the schools. They took it out. That went, it, so then it came down to $187 million. From the 87, $187 million, they split it between seven of us. And it, I believe it came out to about $27 million each. Then they split it between me and my ex-husband, which was about $10.5 million. So that's what I got. <laughs> People expect you to blow it. To some extreme, you know, I did splurge. I bought a nice house that I could grow into maybe one day with a family. Um, I did buy my parents their house and I bought my sister her house. I set up a college fund for my nephew. You know, so those were my splurges. I bought a car. Um, I didn't, you know, I mean, I, I kept it very, I gave a lot to friends and family and, you know, made sure to pay it forward. Like, I got a gift, so. It's fun to give gifts in return. My favorite vacation with my parents was when we went, I took my parents to Alaska. That was their dream vacation. So I took them for a week across Canada and then we went to on a cruise to Alaska. So I'm, I'm really glad we did that. And 
then uh, my favorite single vacation is when I went to Italy because I think I found my future home. <laughs> they just, their lifestyle there is so soothing and calm and they know how to enjoy life. It felt like home when you land there. You didn't feel like you were on vacation. You felt like you were at home. The day. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Come on, ready? One, two, three. Woo! Let's see, I found out I was pregnant with Austin during the Stanley Cup playoffs. So she's my little Stanley Cup baby. Um, and when she was eight months old, I got pregnant with Savannah. And both were a very big surprise. I was not planning on having children then. But nonetheless, they were wonderful little surprises. Oh, it means everything. It's, 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 the, it's the best thing that could have ever happened to me are those little girls. It makes you completely selfless and, and, and it's, it's amazing how much you love these little things that came out of you that, that you, I, I mean, you fall in love with them instantly. Like you've never, you'll never love anybody the way you love, you love your kids. And that's, to me, it was just amazing. I'm not gonna move till you say cheese. In 2011, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. To get me through the first few weeks of that, it was, I'll be okay as long as it's not stage four. Because I've never heard anything good come out of stage four cancer. Like you just, it's never good news if it's stage four. And when I was diagnosed with stage four, that, that threw me for a big old fat loop. I, I never thought I was going to die, ironically, but I knew that it wasn't good. So I guess, I think I'm still, because of everything happened so fast, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that, I guess. I know it, it definitely, um, it definitely, made me think of my own mortality, which you don't want to think of at 31. And it made me question, you know, what was going to happen to the girls and what was going to happen to my family. The hardest call I had to make was calling my mom and telling her I had cancer. Give up a bit, you conquered chemo. So I set motions in place to keep them more grounded, to keep them in college, to think it's not like I graduate high school and I get like, about little money. <laughs> I want the girls to know that you have to, the value of a dollar. I want them to understand that you have to work for things, that, that mommy isn't a bank, that you have to work, whether it be going to school, getting, and earning those grades. You have to, you're not going to be handed everything on a silver platter. You know, they, they say there's two kind of people, those who, you know, the, the money changes them or, you know, they don't. And we didn't want to be the type of people that changed because now we had money. We didn't want to become superficial or snobby or let it, because, you know, they say money is the root of all evil. And to some extent, I believe that is very true. Um, I didn't want to let it become a major factor in my life. It was nice to have, but I'd be able to live my life without it. Money has never, ever solved anything. Money makes things easier um, because it, money doesn't buy happiness, it doesn't buy love, it doesn't make you happy. You make you happy. You have to make your own happiness. You create your own problems, you create your own drama, and you create your own destiny. 